Hey, my name is Connie and today I'll show you how I grow all these berries in pots here in my garden in Melbourne. So if you wanted to grow one berry, I highly recommend strawberries because they are really small plants as far as like fruiting plants go. They're really compact and you can grow them in like balconies, um, you can grow them on like hanging planters or just like pots in general. Over here I have maybe 30 plants, but one strawberry plant's only like that big. So it makes it really easy if you have a small space. If you wanna grow strawberry plants, it's best to grow them from runners. So this is a runner. Strawberry plants, they send out these like mini baby plants and they're like a clone, an exact clone of the mother plant. And if you plant the runner, you can get fruit a lot sooner than if you plant it by seed. So one thing you definitely have to do if you have strawberry plants is to mulch them because otherwise the berries, they if they sit on the soil, they will more likely rot if they're kind of like touchy moisture. In order to kind of like combat that, I decided to give growing strawberries in pots a go because if you grow them in pots, you can grow them like on the edge of the pot and then they like overhang. That way they don't you know, rot from the moisture of touching the soil. So strawberry plants, they fruit in summer as most of the berries do. And then around maybe autumn, they start to die back. You can give them a little bit of a haircut because um, depending on where you live, the leaves kind of go all gross. So I cut them back a bit in winter and they stay dormant and then they will sprout a heap of new leaves again come spring. And then you will get fruit from maybe like late spring to early autumn. So over here, I have a different kind of strawberry. Um, these are called white alpine strawberries. So they're like, well, they're strawberries, but they're mini. So these ones, they're white, which kind of makes it a little bit confusing to figure out whether they're ripe or not. So in order to tell whether or not they're ripe, um, you just like touch it and if it's soft, then it's ripe. And if it comes off easily, then it's ripe. Because they're like a little bit squishy, um, they don't last very long once you pick them. So I actually, this is like my snacking bed in the garden. So if I'm hungry, I just come around here and I look for, I dig for like strawberries to eat. I feel like you can never have enough blueberry plants. I have 10. <laughs> Most people, when they grow blueberries, they always make the mistake of using premium potting mix or just regular potting mix, which is neutral in pH. But blueberries, they really, really need acidic soil. So acidic potting mix is azalea and gardenia mix. So that would be acidic in pH. And then in order to keep it acidic, a really good thing to do that I recommend is to grow them in pots like I've got here. So go with like a really big pot. Um, I think this one is about 50 centimeters wide and then just fill it up with acidic potty mix and you can mulch on top with pine bark mulch, which is acidic in nature as well. So that is the really important tip for growing blueberries. So the next thing I wanted to show you were my bramble berries. So I first started off with three plants, a young berry, Lawton berry, and a Logan berry. So this one over here, this one is a boysen berry. I had only seen people grow them like in the ground and I have like, I have like a regular suburban backyard and I didn't want to put them in the ground because I didn't have enough space. When you do put them in the ground, they kind of send out shoots underground and they pop up everywhere in your garden so they can get a bit weedy. So the way these berries grow um, is that they grow on these like canes and they're really long. So they grow almost like a vine and they could grow like three or four meters long. So I also had to figure out how to contain them. So I picked up like this trellis thing. It's like a vertical trellis and you just shove it in the pot. And then what I've done is I've kind of woven the canes around and then I've tied it up with like string. And so far it's doing pretty well for me. So I was really excited about that. So this one over here is a Logan Berry. So this is one of the few varieties that you can get thornless. Um, so if you want to try one that won't injure you as much, you can try a Logan Berry. I recommend planting them in like a morning sun spot because they sometimes get sunburnt. So you can see if this berry is kind of sunburnt. This one here, I believe, is a tay berry, but it could also be a boysen berry because it looks so similar. <laughs> so the reason why I have so many different varieties is because they all ripen at different times. So I can get a longer kind of harvest from all my berry plants. To me, they taste a little bit similar, all of them, but I'm sure somebody else will tell you that <laughs> they taste a bit different to each other. So this is my raspberry wall. I call this place my raspberry avenue because it's a whole wall of raspberry plants. So I have three different varieties here. 
I have a raspberry talamine. It is a thornless variety, which is really awesome because you don't want to get pricked if you don't have to. <laughs> Next to it, I have a purple raspberry plant. So that one ripens a little later than the red raspberry, which means I can get like a longer harvest overall. This one over here is my golden one. So this is a golden raspberry. Um, it's probably my favorite raspberry plant because they taste, I think they taste a little bit different to regular raspberries. They're really sweet and they kind of taste tropical. <laughs> You definitely should net your berries if you can. I just realized a few days ago that this plant looks like something may have found it because there's a lot of broken branches over here. The saying goes no net, no fruit. So I highly recommend you net them. With all the berries that grow on canes, they come in like two different types. If it's the first year fruiting one, you cut all of the canes down once it has fruited and it'll grow like new ones the next year. And if it's like a second year fruiting one, which this one is, you'll see there's fruiting canes and there's non-fruiting canes. And basically every year you just cut the fruiting canes off and then tie the non-fruiting ones on. So these are my current plants. So this over here is a red currant and that one is a white currant. So this is the first year I'm growing currants, um, so they're pretty new to me, but you can also grow these in pots. Um, so I have, I think it's about a 40 centimeter pot here. With currants, you can grow them in shade. So it's really good if you have like a shady spot and you don't know whether or not the plant will grow. So apparently white currants and red currants are sweeter than black currants, which is why I'm growing them. Um, I don't have a black currant plant yet. <laughs> But yes, I'm really excited for this harvest because it's my first time growing them and also I haven't tasted them yet. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that this inspires you to give growing berries a go as well at home. And if I can do it, you can do it too.